All right. Back again. Um, I just want to talk about this awesome new tablet I saw online. And I'm a huge gadget nerd, lover, whatever. I just love this thing and the whole concept of it. I think it's going to be a huge seller. It's called the Lenovo IdeaPad Duet, as you see down here. But I, uh, mostly I've seen it called the Lenovo Pad or the Lenovo Duet. That you can just leave the Idea Pad out. A lot of uh, people leave the Idea Pad part out. I guess it's a lot. so just call it the Lenovo Duet. Um, I love it. Now what is it? It's a little Chromebook slash. I put up about three different YouTube videos. You can see a picture of it, how it works here. It's just a little Chromebook slash tablet. It comes with this keyboard that you see and the stand that you see. All for 299 bucks. I mean, I love this little idea. Now, there's a couple more caveats. First things I look at, and I'm a real stickler for screen brightness. The benchmark standard for a real good screen, like on a tablet, like on an iPad, something like that, is 400 nits. And most people probably don't care, and they're just like, oh, that screen's bright enough at around 250 nits. That's pretty standard for like an average, boring Joe Schmo laptop. And a good, expensive laptop like a Dell XPS or something, or a Microsoft Surface, or a MacBook would be 400 plus. Usually about 400. <laughs> This so the two things I was really concerned about when I saw this thing was what kind of power does it have? I figured it'd come with a crappy seller on, and what kind of screen brightness? Screen brightness is 400 nits. I've come to find out. Now this thing is not yet. People haven't reviewed it. There's either hands-on from where it's CES time, which as you see January 6th, and then today it seemed to be a flood of um. A flood of um, unboxings. There's obviously some kind of NDA on it, so there's no reviews today. I don't know if those are coming in a week or what. When the NDA and review. If you don't know what an NDA is, it means a non disclosure agreement. And it basically means like you get a product, you're not allowed to review it to a certain time. Maybe you're allowed to unbox it and give a first look and impressions and all that. Clearly, that's what happened here. Everybody was allowed to do their their impressions, first look. Can't well, the hands on was back at CES. That was different. Actually, that from months ago, most people you get more information out of because they're actually playing with it. And today, it was just a bunch of unboxings, which the packaging for it's good. Um, it looks very quality. So why do I think these things? And oh, the second. So the first thing I was major majorly worried about, like I said, I'm a huge stickler for this. The screen brightness. It's a 400 nit screen. So that's great. It's right up there. Um, it's 70% RGB. I'm not sure. That seemed a little bad to me, but I actually found out I think it's pretty good. <laughs> so it's even pretty good in the colors, but more importantly, it's really good in the brightness. It's a 400 nit screen. It's a great screen. Second thing I was really worried about was the processor. But I actually kind of love what they've done. It's a MediaTek P60T, actually. And, um, now I judge everything by Geekbench because, I don't know, it's just what I'm used to. I just like it. And, um, so, now I don't care about gaming. That's the thing. I don't do any, play any mobile games. I do care about gaming in that I'm a big Xbox fanboy and whatnot. But I don't really play any games on PC. I play a little bit of games on PC. But I don't play any games that are like Android games or anything like that. I don't care. Could give a crap. So I don't care about the GPU performance. I just care about the CPU performance because that's actually what makes everything spiffy when you're playing with the device. That's what actually, that's like the bread and butter. You know, the GPU is just for gaming. The actual moving around the device, typing, apps, how they run, all that stuff is CPU. So that's all I care about is the CPU. So I didn't run any. So this MediaTek P60T, well the P60T is not out. But I did find one benchmark of it. And it seems to show that it's like a little bit faster than the P60. A Helio P60 by MediaTek. So it seems like maybe a 5 or 10% speed up. So very mod, you know, you see that. We just saw it with the 
Surface Go, which was updated from the 40 Pentium Gold 4415Y to the Pentium Gold 4425Y. And it was a very nominal. It was a speed up from 1.6 gigahertz to 1.7 gigahertz, basically. Do the math on that. <laughs> you know, it's like a, uh, I guess like a 5% speed up or something. So it seems like the P60T is probably a similar thing to the P60 here. I say that because apparently this Lenovo Duet's the first device to use the P60T. Somebody did find, the reason I know it's a very small speed up, though, somebody had found in all my looking up about this device, did find one benchmark on it, uh, Geekbench, and it was running, you know, just, just about the same as the P60, a little, maybe 5 to 10% faster. So you can tell it's just a slightly, slightly faster P60. So for comparison purpose, I'm just going to assume it's using a P60. Um, but that, that, that actually, Geekbench scores, let's say Geekbench 5, 293 single and 1439 multi. To basically put that in perspective, it's about the same as like a Galaxy Tab S5e, which uses a Snapdragon 670. It's about, it's close to something close a little bit to the level of a Snapdragon 835, which was powering smartphones, state-of-the-art smartphones, about three generations ago. Because it was, right now we have the 865, just came out, 855, 845, 835. But, I'm pretty happy with that because it actually seems decently powerful. You know, I was expecting something terrible like a Celeron, you know. But this has, like I said, it's very it's very similar in power to like a, a Galaxy Tab S5e. Does anybody think a Galaxy Tab S5e is like way underpowered? No, you know. Um, you know, and, uh, uh, try to... Oh, I'll give you another example. It's multi-core multi -core score is about similar to an Apple A10 Fusion that's in the iPad. The 7th gen iPad, which is a very fast chip. Now, granted, it depends on single core is much lower than the A10. That's what the A10's always had is great single core. And I don't know which is more important. I kind of think single core is, but maybe multi-core is because it's like the total power available to you. So I, I tend to go towards single core, put the greater weight. I actually took a picture. I actually benchmarked a lot of my own devices. And I found some interesting results. I took a picture of them and I used Geekbench 5 on them. And then I, for some of these I got them off the web. Some of them I benchmarked my own devices. Here's what I got. I have a Chromebook X2 with a core uh, M3 processor. It's a year or two old now. Which I, I, wanna, I was shocked when I actually ran these results. Even as much as I obsess over Geekbench and stuff. I didn't realize the M3 is a little dated now. It's got a strong single port. This is a Core M3. This is HP Chromebook X2, my Chromebook, with a Core M3. I think it's a 7-something. So I guess that would make it a 7. It's like a Y7130 or so. I don't know what it exactly is. Something along those lines. You can see here is the... Um, I ran this on my own devices. This wasn't taken off a, a website or anything. Here's the single core and the multi-core score on it. This is my Chromebook X2 M3. Here's my OnePlus 7 Pro phone from last year with the Snapdragon 855. You can see single 732, multi 2805. Here is my desktop that I'm recording this on right now. I just rebuilt it from an i5-6600K to this Ryzen 5 2600X. You can see the scores there. You can see the multi is way up. Like This is like almost six times that M3 now. Then I have a Galaxy Tab S4. That's my current tablet. That's what it scores, single and multi. Here's the Tab S5e that I'm about to get. That's a long story. About similar to the S4, about 10 or 15% less. Here's the Helio P P60 in this none of a duet. To me, that's fine. It's right there with the Tab S4, the Tab S5e. The multi-core score is actually better than a Core M3. You know, would you be disappointed with something running a Core M3? No. Um, here is the Apple A10. You can see the single core is off the charts on this one, you know, compared to some of these other ones. Like, it's higher than a Snapdragon 855. But the multi-core, because I think it's only a two-core chip, instead of some of these are eight cores, is it's comparatively lower. Like I said, I tend to think single core is a lot more important, because, like, a lot of things are just single-threaded, or you're just running one core, you know. It's just simpler that way. But still...
And like I said, I'm not sure. I'm not technically inclined enough to know which one's really more important. I used to always think single core was much more important, and I still kind of do. But maybe the multi-core is what matters, because maybe that's like the top, you know. You're loading down all those cores with everything you got. Maybe, maybe that's what matters. I would still sway towards single core, but but you know, but look at this. Like the Helio P, this is basically saving the CPU and the Nova Duet could be as powerful as an iPad, which I consider a really fast, powerful machine—a seventh gen basic iPad, the three hundred twenty-nine dollar one. Here's something I just threw in because I'm looking at this Samsung Galaxy Book Flex Alpha that just came out like yesterday or today. I was actually thinking of buying one, probably won't, but it comes with a uh, 10th Gen i5, I the very newest i5, Ice Lake, I think it's called, i5, 10, 20, 2, blah, 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 the 10 just means it's 10, here you see the scores on it, single, multi, you can see it's got single core up there with a Ryzen, with a desktop chip, multi falls behind, because it's probably like four cores, eight threads, something like that, um, and here it is a Galaxy Tab A I just threw in, and it performs like lower than all these other ones, but actually not bad. The winners here, just no, this is not related to the Duet, but I was really impressed with the the Snapdragon 855. It's not even the latest gen, and man, this thing is, I mean, like to think it's like pulling three times the multi core score of a Intel Core M3, you know, it's crazy. Uh, you know, or compare it even to an A10, it's getting almost as good as single score scores, but it's doubling the multi core score. So I was in it, you know, even the newest, newest 10th gen i5, you know, it's not too far behind the multi core. I was, pr and this is the Snapdragon 855, it's not the 865. And I was also pretty impressed with the Galaxy Tab A, the 2019 refresh by Samsung. It's pulling pretty respectable scores there compared to, let's say, a Tab S5e. Now, the screen is much weaker, but hey. So anyways, that was just to point out that the Duet, it's running this Helio P60, remember? It's, it's pulling some pretty respectable scores there compared to some other chips. I'm pretty happy with it. And it may be a little faster than this because it's the P60T. So maybe it'll run, you know, 305 on the single... 1500 on the multi maybe i can't even guarantee that that's just my guesstimate um so yeah but so this lenovo duet i pulled up some you know videos about it i don't want to you know get any copyright strikes so i'm just maybe doing some fair use just showing like you can see some various like look at here look at the quality of this this is amazing um, you know, I looked at a Chrome unboxing video. Check out their channel. They're a great channel. Um, the guy on there mentioned that uh, the workmanship is very good and all that type of thing. One thing that I would say is, um, so yeah, I think this is amazing. I love this thing. I really want one. It's two ninety nine and uh, for a one hundred twenty eight gigabyte version, and it's uh, two seventy nine for a sixty four gigabyte version. I'd probably go for the one uh, 28 gigabyte. I don't use storage really in any of my devices. I mean, even my desktop, you know, they might as well be all Chromebooks or cloud books for all that I use storage. I just don't. But um, you may. <laughs> so um, for the extra 20 bucks, I probably would spring for the 128 gigabyte version. Then on the other hand, part of me says the extra 64 gigs of memory would be utterly worthless to me, so I might as well save 20 bucks. So I don't know, but. Like I said, my inclination would be either about the same price, get the 128. But yeah, I'm so impressed, and I think this is such a fantastic idea. I think this is going to take off in a huge way. I think that other manufacturers are going to copy. This almost reminds me, you remember the netbook craze? I'm old enough to remember that so many years ago. Which was basically that people made a big deal out of... Um, for a while, there was a thing called netbooks, which were like little laptops, and, and they faded away. They were very popular for a time. To me, I think this category of device right here could like be the next netbook. I mean, this is big, <laughs> in my opinion. Another thing I've really noticed about this device is people have said, I checked the weight. One of the things is, I have the one of these two-in-ones, the Chromebook X2 I mentioned, where you can pull off the screen and use it as a tablet. Pull the screen off the screen. But 
you wouldn't really ever use it as a tablet. It's it's chunky, it's heavy, and I'm the first person that'd be like, "Oh, shut up!" It's not. But honestly, like once you use a Galaxy Tab or an iPad or something that's like real thin and light, and then you try to go back to like a Chromebook X2, or, you know, one of these two in ones, they're chunky. You know, like a Pixel Slate. I've heard is the same way. A lot of people were comparing this to the Pixel Slate favorably, saying this one is a much lighter as a tablet is. This one, though, I Googled the weight, and it's like one pound. And then I Googled the weight of the Tab S5e, and it's like 0.88 pounds, I think. Long story short, this definitely appears to be like as light as a regular tablet. Very close, anyways. Maybe maybe a little, tiny bit heavier. So that, to me, is just great. You know, I can't. I almost can't say enough good things about this. I just love this concept. Love it. For two ninety nine nowadays, that's like a disposable price. You know, that's the perfect price point. It's disposable, and you're getting pretty good power. You're getting. Oh man, I just love this. I want one so bad, and there's not even. There's no reason for me to own one because I really don't use a laptop, especially when I'm not playing Destiny. I have a Chromebook X two, as I mentioned. Which is kind of a little bit nicer than this. Probably has a Core M3 CPU, as mentioned. It has, um, it still has four gigabyte RAM, which this also has four gigabyte RAM. Well, the resolution on this display is 1900 by 1200. Not that it matters. Um, it, um, what was I on about with my? Uh, oh yeah, I have a Chromebook X2. I don't really use when I'm playing Destiny. I use it a lot because I'm sitting there in my living room playing. <sighs> Destiny all the time, and I'm referencing all these like Reddit posts and stuff about you know min max, you know whatever I may need to look at, you know how I need to set, you know uh, maybe videos, you know. So I use it when I'm playing Destiny. When I'm not playing Destiny, which I haven't for like three or four months, kind of quit cold turkey. <laughs> I don't really use my laptop much. Um, it's in, you know, it's 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 on my coffee table, but my Chromebook X2 laptop, and I also don't like how that thing is kind of top heavy. Um, I kind of wish it had a traditional laptop form factor, but anyways. Um, and I got a tablet, the Tab S4. I don't really use it much. And I'm about to trade it in for an S5e because it's got a little scratch on it. That's a whole other story. I'm stupid for doing that because the scratch is tiny and I barely notice it, but it still bothers me, so I'm trading it in. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I have no use for this thing. I've got a good tablet. I've got a good uh, Chromebook. I've got a powerful desktop. I've got a powerful smartphone. I've got a OnePlus Seven Pro smartphone. But I still want it so bad. I don't. It's, it's just it's just so cool to me. Now I noticed these. I think the only place these are available is at Best Buy. And I noticed I went there and it sold out first time I looked. And so that tells me this could be really popular. And like I said, I just love 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 this idea. I love this device. I think it'd be great for students, kids. I don't really have a use for it. I still want one. Um, yeah, I think kids would be a fantastic market for it. Um, students. I want it. <laughs> I want it. I'm not sure if I've mentioned this, but I want it. Um, yeah, cool device. So... I think it's going to be a huge hit, mark my words. And I think it's going to spawn a whole category of devices like this. Because this is what everybody wants, a little a little tablet slash, you know, and the price, man. Like, you know, uh, one of the things they were saying in this is, uh, like, for example, I think they were comparing it to the, the iPad key, you know, and saying, oh, the keyboard's not quite as nice as, like, the iPad keyboard. But the, the iPad keyboard by itself for the iPad Pro is like $350, more than this entire device with the tablet, keyboard, and stand. <laughs> so that <laughs> just tells you. Um, another one is, uh, um, oh, I think that this really kind of makes the Microsoft Surface Go, which I've always kind of wanted one, but never pulled the trigger on. I think it kind of makes it pretty damn obsolete. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I don't see why you'd have a Surface Go now. Uh, the Surface Go is three ninety nine for the crappy Pentium Gold version, which Geekbench is similar to or less, it's going to have similar to or less power than this thing. Um, it, uh, 
It, has a, it probably has a somewhat. It says it has a sharper screen uh, as far as resolution, and I would guess that the screen on the Surface Go is a little nicer. But you know, this has still a nice screen, and then um, then it has both have four gigabytes of RAM. But you're talking for the Surface Go is three ninety nine for the base model with the Pentium Gold chip, and then it has the keyboard is ninety nine. So to really for the model and the keyboard together. You're talking 500 bucks. That's for the lowest one. They're selling a Core M3 version, but to me, they just priced it stupidly. It's 629, I think, for the Core M3 8 gigabyte RAM version of the Pentium Go. Then you got to add another 100 bucks for a keyboard. You're talking 729 bucks. You know, for that price, you can get an awesome laptop or something. Why would you want a Pentium Go or a, or a Surface Go? You know, I can get this fan like the Samsung Chromebook or a flex laptop for like 850 you know 829 100 bucks more and it's like way nicer with a freaking ridiculously nice screen you know i don't see the value proposition in surface go at all uh you know maybe if they knock a few couple hundred bucks off the price and so forth it would be attractive but yeah this just makes the surface go i think it used to have some value but now at this price point this thing kills it, in my opinion. It's three hundred bucks, two hundred bucks less. You know, it's like damn near half the price. And what are you missing? The screen, like I said, the screen and build quality on the Surface Go are probably a little nicer. That's about it. <laughs> um, the operating system. Now that's a big one. If you need Windows, you're going to need the Go. But or, or that's going to be. A, but I don't see very many people needing Windows anymore. And I'm a Microsoft fanboy. But um, and then on top of that, like, um, you know, between the Chrome OS and window and windows, it's kind of a catch 22. Like some people might need windows, but just as many people might prefer to have a light, you know, always updating, uh, trouble free OS as to have windows, you know, this clunky thing and the Pentium gold and the base level surface go is not powerful enough to really drive windows would be my concern windows is a little heavier operating system you know you need more power to drive it this thing can run it like a media tech or something and still probably be spiffy you know and um whereas yeah so i think this kills the go and, and that's going to have a real problem selling now in my opinion uh people have I'm, uh some of the review or first looks have mentioned that like this is going to be like a second device you know you're probably not you're not going to want this as your main device it's not going to be the chipset's not powerful enough for like heavy heavy work not that you'd probably be doing that on a chrome this is going to be more of a content consumption slash secondary device you know i guess to your desktop or a main laptop whatever that may be and uh i agree with that i think it's it's very slated to that you know, and another thing is like a 10.5 inch, I think, or 10 point, I think it's a 10.5 screen. Those are pretty cramped, you know, uh, I'm familiar, you know, that's something like a tab, uh, a galaxy tab or whatever. So you're not necessarily going to be wanting to like do a lot of heavy work or anything on these with this cramped screen kind of, you know, but I mean, for what it is, wow. I mean, I really like it. I like the media tech, media tech, even the media tech chip really kind of gives it like a, personality or something to me you know um just uh, rather than just another boring snapdragon of some type you know um yeah i really i really 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 like this idea i think this is great for kids students 299 you know buy one <laughs>